Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Uh, kind of a combination today of two different requested programs. One was uh, about uh, slot bluebird houses and my opinion of those and uh, about helping birds roosting or places to sleep, especially during the cold winter months, which are you know, facing us right now, heading ahead. So I thought I would combine those two because those are, for me, are very, very closely related. Uh, so we're going to cover that topic. So right off the bat, who are the winter roosters that we can help that in our backyards? Some of the most popular ones are the ones that are known to use man-made structures to uh, sleep at night and, and protect them against weather or help to protect them against weather. Uh, and this photo, the combination is the Eastern Bluebird in the upper left, the Carolina Wren in the upper right, and a Black-capped Chickadee in the Tufted Titmouse. So members of these families are known to use structures to sleep in at night and to stay warm. So we're going to talk about what structures and some of the things you can do to help them in those structures uh, whenever you, you, you put them up and you clean or don't clean them out at the end of the nesting season. So one of the most popular and easiest things that you can put up to help uh, birds at night uh, are, are roosting pockets. Uh, and these are very simple. They're not nesting structures. They're not watertight, but they do protect against the, the elements, the, the especially the winds. And I like these little pockets. I like to tuck them away up into like uh, crevices under my deck where, where the birds will like to, to sleep at night uh, and give them a place to be able to get into. And there are different designs of them. They're made from seagrass, actually. And they some have roofs and some do not. And they're different sizes. And the holes are not, like I said, they're not built to uh, be nesting structures. So a lot of the holes are not, uh, you know, round. They're square. They're just, they want to get in and out of the elements. And you know, my Carolina Wren absolutely loved the one underneath my deck at, at my old house. So uh, bluebirds are known to use them, but they're mainly chickadees and and uh, wrens are the ones we know that use these pockets the most that we have the most documentation on. But there are other bird houses. We know that birds will use bird houses uh, for roosting uh, at night. And bluebird houses are, are known for that, especially the, the one and a half inch diameter opening is good for the birds to get into. And there are uh, houses on the market that you can actually convert. Uh, you can actually... Uh, switch the hole to be on the bottom, the, the front of the, the the face of the birdhouse. You can actually uh, turn it upside down so the hole's down here. But then you would need to put some kind of rods in there for the birds to get on. So one the, what, what studies are showing that one of their favorite type houses to use are the slot houses. Um, these are, uh, you know, kind of geared toward tree swallows and were built with tree swallows in mind. But bluebirds will use them. And I've also seen them advertise that they're start, I mean, House sparrow resistant. I don't believe it. Um, I've seen how house sparrows use them, but uh, if they've worked for you, fantastic. I'm glad they did, but I have found that they're not very effective. But the hole is replaced by a slot across the top there. And uh, tree swallows do tend to like this for entering uh, their holes, and especially when they're, they're babies, they'll get two or three of them up there with their face sticking up there at a time when the adults come to feed them. But like I said, they're showing that um, birds like to use these at night. And this is uh, the same box with the, with the front open on it. And he's just clean out. And, you know, remember, I recommend, you know, you clean out nesting after each uh, each nesting because they're like with bluebirds, there's three or four in a season. But I re remember, I always say that last nesting of the season, which is now uh, the birds are cleared out. I like to leave that nesting material in there, especially if it's clean and no insects or anything like that in it. Leave it in there for a little bit of extra insulation when they want to nest in it. When they want to, I'm sorry, when they want to roost in it uh, during the winter months. So uh, there are other types, another uh, design, just a different company. Uh, it, the same thing. It has that slot opening, which uh, they see, like I said, uh, favored in the roosting. And it's important that they all be easy to clean out. And then the things that you could help add to the safety and uh, the appeal of the box, especially for the birds' safety. Uh, this one has a nest lift in it, and this is a nest lift. You know, they it keeps them. The, the moisture tends to 
uh, get in there at no matter how tight it is. A lot of times rain can get in there, blowing rains and things like that. And if there's nesting material in it and the, the it's sitting right on the bottom of the box, then the, it tends to get wet, which festers insects. And of course, in the cold, it would be even worse. So I like having a nest lift in my boxes to keep that nesting material up off the floor. And if you uh, haven't had anybody use the box and you haven't had nesting material in it to leave uh, at that last quote clean out, you can also add nesting material in there. And, you know, there's commercially available ones with got the combination of feathers and cotton and wool and, and string and things like that to put in there on top of that nest shelf, nest lift uh, it, for some extra insulation. Um, and then, of course, there's just simple things like uh, cedar uh, shavings or pine straw. All of those helps insulate that box. But again, I like that nest lift to keep it off of the bottom. So what are the ways, you know, you, you want to help and I want to help these birds, you know, we know that most birds sleep in uh, thick bushes at night and uh, and trees and, you know, they have the, the spe special adaptations of their feet so that they uh, lock on the limb and they don't get blown off. Uh, I'll put a link into my video about that in there. But just keeping them out of the elements and protecting them from rain, protecting them from, uh, you know, the cold by a little bit of insulation around them. And boy, believe me, they'll stack in a box. I mean, there's some famous photos out there I've seen of like 20 bluebirds in one box, just all stacked on top of each other uh, for warmth and, you know, the sharing of warmth and keeping it. And yes, I know the feathers insulate them from each other, but it, it, it must work because they do it. Chickadees will do the same thing. And the whole world's famous for uh, like blue tits and long tail tits, things like that over there in the old world uh, doing that to stay warm. So nest boxes in the winter can be a big help. Roosting pockets are nice, simple solutions to that. If you don't want to put a nest box in your yard, you can add a, a, a nest a roosting pocket or two in there. But uh, if you maintain them, keep them in good shape, uh, make them safe for the birds. And uh, a nest lift is important with nesting material left in there uh, at the end. And remember, whenever it comes to the new nesting season for those, especially those bluebird boxes, usually February, you want to clean out that old nesting material because they won't reuse it. They'll bring in new stuff. But over the winter, leaving that last nesting material in there is a good idea. So it's a great idea for a program. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, we'll be on live at, uh, at this Thursday night because uh, we missed last week. But uh, I hope you can join us and we'll talk about some of our favorite birds. We're looking forward to coming back to our feeders, which have been gone uh, for, for months now. So give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.